hello guys welcome to today's tutorial on superposition theorem in our previous videos we've learned about the mesh current method and the load voltage method used to analyze what's a given circuit which contains two or more sources but in this video we are going to use the superposition theorem to calculate for the current i naught that is the current flowing through the 30 ohms resistor the superposition theorem works only when the sources given are more than one when you have two or more sources you can apply the superposition theorem and how does it work whenever you are applying the superposition theorem what we have to do is we have to let the sources act independently okay looking at this diagram we have two sources that is a voltage source and a current source and we are asked to find the current in this setting so what we are going to do is we are going to let this voltage source act alone when this current source is turned off or deactivated we are going to let this voltage source act and we use that diagram or that circuit to calculate for the current flowing through this 30 ohms resistor then we will put that value down then we will again let this 20 amperes act while this voltage source is now deactivated and then we use that circuit to calculate for the current flowing through that same 30 ohms resistor then after we will superimpose or we will algebraically add those two currents resulting from these two sources we will add them algebraically and get the total current flowing through this 30 ohms so it's all about letting the sources act alone independently each diagram you have let only uh, one source be active deactivate the other source find the current or voltage for that element draw your circuit again with the other source acting deactivate all other sources and find the current or voltage for that element then you sum those two current or voltages algebraically then that will be your total current or voltage for that element so let's see how we can apply the theorem to this question so in this question, I have two sources, as you said, a voltage source and a current source. So you can decide to let any of them act first. So if I am letting this 200 volts act alone, it means I am going to turn off this current source. And in superposition, whenever you are turning off or deactivating a current source, you have to represent it by an open circuit. In turning off a current source, Represent it by an open circuit. Alright, so let's say we are starting. I will let the 200 volts act. So I'm going to draw my circuit with only what? The 200 volts. So let's see, I have the 25 ohms here. I have this then. I have this one, the voltage source. I have this thing. Now, I am going to deactivate this source because this one is what's acting. And as we said, if you are deactivating a current source, you have to what's represented by an open circuit. That is, you just open that terminal. So this is where the current, this is where we have the current source. So I have represented it by an open circuit. Then you continue with what? Your diagram. Your resistance will be there. It is only the sources that you are what's deactivating them one by one. So I have my 30 ohms, I have my 10 ohms, this is my 10, this is what my 25 ohms, this is my 200 volts. So we are going to use this diagram to calculate what the current flowing through the 30 ohms resistor. What you should know is that that current will be what the current due to what the 200 volts acting. That is not the total current I know. It is the current due to what the 200 volts acting alone. So you have to find that current. So I can say, okay, let me name that current I naught prime. Since the total current in the question is I naught, I can say when this one is acting, its current is maybe I A, I B, I anything. But I will call it what? I naught prime. All right. The direction is what very important. Because if this one is acting now, we are going to use our network reduction method we've done. So whenever each source is acting, you can apply the network reduction method, the mesh current method, the load voltage method to calculate your elements, your current or what voltage. So whatever method you want to use to calculate for this I0 prime, you can use it. 
all right so let's see we are going to use our network reduction method to calculate the current i not prime let's see what will happen this is the source and we have a total current being produced from here it so the total current got to this junction and the current split between this branch and that branch all right so we can use that method to calculate the current flowing through this that's um, so what does it mean? It means the resistor on this branch here is parallel towards the element here. And let's see, the current that's splitted here, the current will pass through the 10 ohms. When it gets here, what will the current do? This branch is open circuited. It means the resistance here is infinite. When you have an open circuit, it means its resistance is infinite. So when the current gets to this junction, it won't split because of this infinite resistance here so that current will continue and pass through this 30 ohms meaning this 30 and this 10 are in series okay so we can find its equivalent we are trying to get the total current so that we can use the current divider rule with length to what find the current in this 30 ohms so the 30 and this 10 are in series which gives us let's say ra is 10 plus 30 giving us what 40 ohms so let's draw an equivalent circuit for these two portion so i have 25 here i have this i have my source here and i have this one here so this is the 40 this is the 10 25 and what 200 volts all right so from here we can calculate what the total resistance you know that this 40 and this 25 those who, who have watched our network reduction video you you get it very fast you know that this 40 and this 25 are in what parallel because current will divide between this branch and that branch so our let's say rb is 25 and 40 in parallel so 25 by 40 over 25 plus 40 which gives us let's calculate 25 by 40 25 plus 40 which gives us what 213 ohms so that 213 ohms is here then we have our source and our resistor here so we have this 10 200 volts and this 200 on what 13 so from here we can calculate our total current so total current it let's divide the board total current it is what total voltage over total resistance and what's the total resistance 10 plus 10 plus 200 on what 13 so our total current 200 over 10 plus 200 on 13. So our total current is giving us 260 on 33 amperes. That is our total current. So the total current being produced by this 200 volts is that. And we are interested in getting what the current through the 30. That is the I not prime. So from what we learned, we have to go back. So you see we are just applying what we've learned in the superposition theorem it's nothing new superposition theorem is just letting each of the sources act so if a source is acting you just have to apply your previous uh, analysis methods to calculate for the current or voltage it's nothing new so let's see how we can get the r naught prime that's the current in the 30. so from here we have our total current we move back we realize that the total current it split between 25 and what 40 and our 30 is in this what 40 so you have to use the current divider get the current for the 40 so current for the 40 i 40 ohms is what 25 over 25 plus 40 times the total current 260 on 33 so let's calculate together we have 25 over 25 plus 40 times 260 on 33 and that is giving us 100 over what 33 amperes so 100 
over 33 amperes is the current through this 40. And that is the current flowing through what? The 10 and the 30. Why? Because they are what? In series to give us that 40. So very simple. So we've calculated for what? I not prime. That is what? 100 over 33 amperes. So I not prime is 100 over 33 amperes. Now, the next thing to do is also what? Let the other source act. So if the other source is acting, which is the 20 amperes is acting, it means I have to now deactivate this one because I'm done with this one. So we are now going to turn off this one. So now, if we are turning off this one, which is a voltage source, what you have to note is that in deactivating a voltage source, you have to represent it by a short circuit. First, we did with what? Deactivating a current source. We needed to what? Represent it by an open circuit. But now, if you are deactivating a voltage source, you have to represent its terminals by a short circuit. So let's see how this one will work. Let's say let the 20 amperes act. Now this one is going to act. So I'll draw my circuit, then I'll deactivate this portion. So I have my 25 here. I have this 10 here. Now this is where the voltage source is. And I'm going to watch short circuit. So I'll just bring a straight wire connecting it. Good. And I have my 10 ohms here. Now my source is a current source. And I have what? My resistor here. So this is my 30 ohms. This is my 20 amperes. My 10 ohms. My 10 ohms is here. My 25 ohms. So now our focus is to what? Use this diagram and also calculate the current through that same resistor 30 because that is the focus. We are using this diagram to calculate what the current through this 30. So let's see how the current will be. This is acting now. So current will get here, then it will split here and here. Meaning the current flowing through this 30 is also what? Moving down like this. Let's call it I0 prime prime. So we are going to calculate the current I not what prime prime. We've been we've been given what the total current in this diagram. So there is no need for us to calculate total resistance to calculate what total current because the current itself is given. So we can just apply the current divider here straightforward. And the current divider works when the resistors are connected in what parallel. So we can have two, three, four resistors in parallel, then we use the current divider. So in this diagram, we have to know that the current is split between 30 and a resistor here. We can't use the 30 and the 10 because there are other elements here. So let's find the equivalent of what? This portion and then you apply the divider rule. So we can see that the 25 and this 10, we are starting from this other end. The 25 and this 10 are in what? Parallel. So let's find its equivalent. Let's say RE is 25, 10. 25 plus what 10 and that one is giving us that one is giving us 50 on what 7 ohms so when I join this 25 on 10 in parallel to get this you have to realize that that equivalent here will be in series with this 10 we are not going to draw because now we are an expert in it you realize that this 25 and this 10 in parallel is going to be what? In series with this 10 ohms. So let's find that equivalent RB, which is what? 50 on 7 plus 10. So that one also gives us 120 on what? 120 on 7. So the diagram looks like this. I have one resistor here. I have what? A current source here. And I have my 30, so this is the 30, the 20, and what? The 120 on 7. And we are interested in finding I0 prime prime. So the equivalent of 1, 2, 3 is the 120 on 7 ohms. So the current divider here, I0 prime prime, the current in this one is the opposite. So 120 on 7 over 120 on 7 plus what? 30 times 20. 
So let's punch it together. We have 120 on 7 over 120 on 7 plus 30 multiplied by what? 20. And we have 80 on 11 amperes. That is I naught prime prime. So with the current flowing through the 30 ohms resistor, due to what? The 20 amperes is 80 on 11 amperes. Now, our job is to what? Algebraically add those two currents. We are going to consider the direction they are flowing through the resistor. So let's see. The main question is saying that the current flowing through the 30 is moving down. Which means the current due to each of the sources, the ones flowing in the same direction as the original current given is what? Positive. is to be considered positive. What I mean is, the diagram is saying, the question is saying, I know is moving down. So, due, the current due to each of the sources, the one flowing in the same direction as the I know should be considered positive. So, when this one was acting, we realized the current flowing through the 30 is also moving down because the class was here. So, its current was like this. Some was passing here, like that. So, the current flowing through the 30 I know prime is moving down. That is in the same direction as our current I know. So, it is to be considered what positive. Now, when this current source is also acting, the current flowing through the 30 ohms, I not prime prime, was also what? Moving downwards. It is also in the same direction as what? This one. So that one is also what? Positive. So the total current, I not, in the diagram, I not, is to be what? I not prime plus I not prime prime because they are all in the same direction. So we have I not prime plus I not prime prime. And that is giving us what? 100 on 33. 100 on 33 plus I not prime prime, which is 80 on 11. So 100 on 33. 100 on 33 plus 80 on 11 is giving us 340 on 33. Amperes, which is the same as 30.30 recurring. So the current flowing to the third ohm, that is I naught, is equal to what? 340 on 33 amperes using the superposition theory. So I will prefer that each of you also, after doing the superposition, will use the mesh current method and the node voltage method to also calculate the current flowing through this 30 ohms resistor and you have to get the same answer we have here that's the 340 on 33 amperes so that is the end of today's video in our next video we will be solving more questions using the superposition theory thank you very much